I realized something for the very first time. This is one of the things about studying the Word of God that I think is so different from any other uh, book, even a um, even what would be considered holy books of, uh, of the world. It's, it's set apart in so many ways because it is a living word. But you, you just keep calling deep unto deep because you keep discovering new things about it. And that the last time you studied it, you never saw that. And then suddenly you'll realize this, you'll read this in a commentary and it will just open up to you. And so I, I ran the word um, abound and abundant and abounding. I ran it through a keyword search and brought up every single time the word is used in the Old and New Testament. And I was absolutely floored when I realized that every single reference to abounding in the entire Old Testament except for one, and it's about God making the waters abound, so it still ultimately draws back to him. Every single reference except one is always about God abounding. Now listen, because this is key. An example of it is Exodus 34, 6, the Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding. God doesn't just have steadfast love and faithfulness. He abounds in it. I mean, like it's in abundance. It's a, an abundance of flowing steadfastness, love, and faithfulness. And, and this is when I began to put it together. That the reason why Christ gives us abounding life is because we come into his life. And he abounds. Oh, I need, I'm just going to wait till y'all get it. Because... <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? That because our God abounds in love and he abounds in fruitfulness, he abounds in faithfulness. When we come into relationship with him and when his spirit lives inside of us, we are invited into divine abounding, a divine kind of abundance.